Oh no! 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 The 90s celebrations do continue, my friends, because if you've seen any of my previous videos, you will have seen that I've highlighted the PlayStation 1, one of my favorite consoles of all time. That's where I got my real experience with role-playing games and many other games. And I recently did a video highlighting the games that I believe should have been a part of the PlayStation 1 Classic and why I bought one now, which ever since that video, it dropped from $30 to $20. $20! for a PlayStation Classic, but that's a different kind of compilation because we're gonna be going back to summer 1999 as we take a look at the PlayStation Jam Pack that was released during that time. And for five bucks, you got a nice chance to experience a variety of different games, including Ape Escape, Bloody Roar 2, The Next Tetris, MLB 2000, 3 Extreme, which if you've been subscribed to the channel, you know I have a personal vendetta with those games. Elmo's Letter Adventure. So we're going to be having quite the experience here as we get to see this intro because I'm going to give you an overview of the content that was available in this jam pack. Then we're going to get to see every single demo. I'm going to do highlights reel with my impressions and then almost like a DVD that has a movie. Well, I guess I should say Blu-ray. Almost like a Blu-ray that has behind the scenes. We're gonna take a look at the videos and everything else included in this bunch to get a time capsule of the things that happened with the PS1 in summer 1999. But before we begin, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and give me that thumbs up because that, that does make me pretty darn happy. But here we have the menu, much like the previous one that I covered, they just changed uh, a couple of things. So the vault is where they have the meat and potatoes. That's where they have the main demos. Oh, okay, I'm excited. I'm a real big fan of professional wrestling. And I think this is around the time that WCW Thunder came out. That was a terrible game. So it's gonna be some kind of developer interview. And then the download station. This is where they would have uh, memory card saves for, for a specific game. So maybe they would have certain items unlocked and things like that. So we're gonna see what they had available. Tech Q&A for the Pocket Alpha 3. So that's that's Charlie from Street Fighter Alpha 3, but I honestly don't know what the Pocket Alpha was or if it even came out in the US. I've seen videos of that, but I really don't know what it is. So it's gonna be interesting for us to uh, look at look at that and react. Imports, gang, gangway monsters. Okay, so usually, with the imports, they would have them be in part of the uh, vault with the other games. But I guess they wanted to have that be its own thing so people knew going in, hey, maybe this is Japanese dialogue. Maybe you won't understand that all that well. So it's nice that they kept that separate from everything else. And then here we have the vault. So let's take a look at the games that are included in this bunch. First, we have Ape Escape. And this is a game that I don't believe I ever played and I think it was a big deal because it made use of the analog sticks. So this is something that I don't think could be played on the PS1 Classic. Three Extreme. <sighs> I'm, I'm not looking forward to playing this one. Luckily, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut to the highlights in this video and only make myself look good. Or, or at least I'm going to try. Bloody Roar 2. Man, this is a game that I rented a lot. And I'm saying that I rented it at least once or twice every month. Looking back, I don't know why I didn't just flat out go and, and buy it, but it was one of those really good fighting games because you had the chance to have two characters in one because you would have the normal character, but then they would turn into a specific beast, and that was pretty awesome. The next Tetris, it's it's uh, the next Tetris. It's, it's one of those. MLB 2000, I really don't care for sports games aside from basketball, so I'm just gonna give you a quick glimpse of this game when we go down to the gameplay bunch. Elmo's Letter Adventure. This right here. This is the reason that I actually love to experience demos. And I'm serious, I'm not even being sarcastic because this is a game that's catered for children. So at some point, this is supposed to be an educational experience. So will I learn something from Elmo? We're gonna take a look at that. Then we have R4 Ridge Racer Type 4. I don't think I ever played this Ridge Racer game. I know I played some of the other ones and I had a lot of fun with them. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Okay, so this is the first one, right? Xena Warrior Princess. I love to watch that series growing up. I would watch uh, that 
and a Hercules. I don't know if that series was actually any good or not. And I believe this is like a third person action game. And this we're just gonna gloss over because these are basically YouTube videos before YouTube videos. Here we have Crash Bandicoot Warp, Platinum Relics. A lot of times what they would do is uh, just highlight different strategies and abilities that you can unlock or put to practice in any of these games. So here you see Extreme Battle Mode, and these are all videos. So you see with Street Fighter Alpha 3, Custom Combo, 40 hit for Dawson. So very specific. And uh, Tomb Raider 3, th 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 Thames? Thames? Wharf Level Shortcut. So if, if you want a shortcut, you go and play this. So now let's take a look at each demo contained in this jam pack, and then afterwards we're going to be coming right back here and taking a look at the different videos and features included in the jam pack for summer 1999. I love Tetris. I'm not any good at it, but I do own a copy of Puyo Puyo Tetris on the Nintendo Switch, but my favorite Tetris game is Tetris Attack, and this one is nothing like it. So when I first saw the title of The Next Tetris, I was thinking to myself, this is just going to be a 3D version of Tetris, and initially it does look like that, but you can see that some of the pieces actually move around, and in addition to that, some of the pieces snap off, and this demo includes multiple challenges. So. Instead of just having a bare bones Tetris experience, you have to clear out a specific path that they lay out for you. One of my favorite things of going into a Tetris game now, something like Tetris 99, is the color, the soundtrack, and this game has neither one of those. It looks washed out, there's nothing memorable in the sound department, so I don't know if the full version of the game is a lot better than this, but let's just say we're better off playing Tetris 99 or literally any other version other than this one. Ridge Racer Type 4. It feels like when you talk about the PlayStation 1 and racing games in the console, people tend to favor games like Gran Turismo 1 and 2, and rightfully so. Those games were incredible, the mechanics, the simulation aspects, the upgrades, but Ridge Racer was more about bringing that arcade racing experience into the PS1. Playing this demo, I realized that there is absolutely a market where Sony could revive Ridge Racer, but then again, when you look at the Xbox scene with Forza, Forza Horizon, I just don't think that this would hold up in comparison to that game. But I had a lot of fun with this, switching the camera angles. Sometimes when you go to the first person view, things can get a little complicated because the background blends in with everything else. So I found myself struggling every now and then, but that was until I realized how fun and great the drifting was. You get a little bit too drifty in the game, almost like there's no way a real car is capable of that that I know of, but it feels so good and honestly, I think that's all that matters. But let's not make any mistakes about it. This doesn't mean that I'm gonna go to eBay and buy myself a copy of Ridge Racer Type 4. It was good to play it in a demo format. I got, I got my taste of it, but I'm perfectly okay with playing other games. I played this, it was a video game, I had a controller in my hand, and I did have myself an objective which was grab all the axes because X gon' give it to you Elmo. And yes, I was thinking about that this whole time and my wife just looked at me weird, but I already said it and I'm not gonna remove it. And I'm just speaking right now because I feel like I need you to be tortured alongside me. Here's, here's a 20 second clip of this game with no interruption whatsoever. And look, it's a game made for kids, it's made for infants, it doesn't even have an E rating, it has an early childhood rating. It's good, helps you helps you understand the X's, and uh, that's kind of it. This was a great season for the letter X. Three Extreme. What can I say about a sequel to a mediocre game other than this is also a mediocre game, and I don't know if this was just the demo, but the other games, they had nice environments in California and places like that, but for the demo, it's just this narrow corridor that's super boring to look at. Like, I don't know if this is supposed to simulate some kind of skate park, but it is completely unappealing, so if they put this into the demo thinking that this is going to make me hit the, the purchase button, that is in no way the case. 
a large change that I saw from 2 Extreme, which I have a video about that on the channel, is that instead of the sprite-based characters that they had in that game where they had some really odd physics, with this one, they did change them to 3D models, but it looks awkward, it looks unfinished, and maybe it is, but remember, this is a demo, this is not the final product, and the final product is also probably really bad, but consider this, you have 3 Extreme in this demo, and you have a little game called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, so you know what, Let, let's just switch to that, let's talk about a good game for once. Playing the demo to the first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game made me realize that these games have gotten gradually faster as time went by and I really didn't notice that. And while I was playing this, I think I realized that I never played the original Tony Hawk game. I remember playing the second one with its incredible soundtrack and the ones after, at least before things went down south. But playing this one, you saw there was untapped potential with this series. Just by looking at the gameplay, you can tell they still hadn't added a couple of features, mainly manuals. It's really weird to think about a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game without manuals, but hey, here it is. And it also seems to be overall a lot more difficult to carry combos. I think this one, it was still sort of in the middle ground where it wasn't a super outrageous game, but it also wasn't a game focused on realism. Overall, I have to say that this may be the best demo included in the bunch, simply because, number one, it's a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game, and number two, the fact that you can quickly hit the retry button means that you can really hang around in this area and try to get good at the game as much as possible. It made perfect sense because by the time you purchase the full version of the game, you will have understood the gameplay, you will have understood the mechanics. Playing the demo to MLB 2000, I was able to reconfirm something that, as somebody that lives in Puerto Rico, it should not be like this, which is, I have no idea about anything related to baseball. I saw a couple of names here that I'm like, oh, I, I know that's, a, that's somebody, that's a popular name, I recognize that, I don't know why they're popular or what they accomplished, but, but good for them. And the demo didn't look bad. It's got 3D models and they have a little bit of personality to them. When they're about to head up to the plate, which I hope that's what it's called, they're kicking things around, they're getting ready. That's where you choose the type of throw for when you want to throw the ball. If you want it to be curved or straight, and then you have the bat, and then you can bat the balls, and then hopefully you get a home run, because I've heard the, the home run is a good thing, especially if you have like three people in each plate, that gives you like three points, which is more than zero, and then people are like, yes, you, you actually did it, you did an awesome job, and then if the ball doesn't get a home run, you can actually try to grab it, and then you can have somebody go out, Hey, this this baseball thing, I think I can I can do a pretty good job explaining it. Seriously though, I'm totally lost. And I apologize if you're a fan of baseball. You're listening to me right now, and you're probably getting tortured, so let's just move on now. Ape Escape was one of those games on the PS1 that I always wanted to play, but I never got around to it. Unlike other games, with this one, you needed to have a DualShock controller to play it, otherwise it wouldn't even let you. And that's because you actually use both analog sticks, one for movement and the other to attack. In the game, the objective is, wait for it, to capture apes because they're they're escaping, ape escape, you, you get the point, right? And having played the demo, I totally get why people have always wanted to have a sequel for this game because yeah, it was a little bit on the clunky side because with the red analog stick, say you wanna have the net point forward, then you slide the analog stick up. If you wanna attack an ape on the left side, then you move it left, which means that the jump button is actually one of the shoulder buttons on the DualShock, which is a little weird simply because we're not used to that. But once you get past that, you get access to a really charming game. And it gives you a nice feel for what the full version could be. And I know that this game did end up getting sequels, which I assume are only even better versions of this game. So do I think this was a good demo? Absolutely. I really want to play the full version of this game. So if you played Ape Escape, let me know what you think of it. Xeno Warrior Princess. I used to watch the TV show all the time during the 90s and playing this demo, I was a little upset. It's not because it was a bad game, it's because it was, it was a really good game. I know we can always do this thing of, hey, television, movie, video game tie-ins and stuff like that, that's all awful. This was actually damn good. This gave me vibes of Heavenly Sword on the PlayStation 3 because you can actually throw one of her weapons and it is a one-hit kill if it gets an enemy. You also have a kick attack to knock the enemies back, you can block attacks completely, and you do have your sword, 
And what really surprised me about the game is the fact that if you have multiple enemies that you're battling at the same time, it looks pretty good. But going into this, I thought I was going to make all sorts of fun about this game, yet the more that I played, uh, the more that I died, first of all, because it's a very challenging game. But then afterwards, I was admiring this game and wondering to myself, do you think that maybe the, the TV show Hercules also had a good video game? Because usually, whenever they have games based on TV shows and movies, they'll try to rework that video game to make sense for another television show or movie just to get some more money out of you. And much like Ape Escape, once I was done playing this demo, I was actually contemplating getting the full game, which is... Which is weird. I feel really weird right now. That was a lot of gaming, folks, but out of all those demos, let me know which one stuck out for you, which one was your favorite, or which one are you like, man, that is so bad, it is so good, but let's take a look at the demo menu. We're gonna be going right back. So that was the vault. Let's take a look at this. I I'm so curious about this because here we have Goldberg, one of the biggest stars in WCW history, and then we have a developer interview. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's for uh, Thunder. We're, we're just going right in there. Yeah, low quality footage, people. Man, Lex Luger, we got the total package. The K-Dog, Scott Hall. Who's next? Goldberg had the best spears. Seriously, so good Wrestling's at those. Wrestling's a great thing to watch when you want oh, to get man. out of reality. Let me just turn on the, the TV ball. and... You know, watch some of the crazy drama that goes on. Is and uh, we're bringing that to you in the game. The things that I'm proud about. I love how, how the audio is actually out of sync. Are the details, the way the characters uh, leave the ring, the way they come in, and it, it really brings the detail. The you just you just took of, footage you know, from the shows into the in game. Your living room. I I could do that, okay? The game had a nice presentation buddy, in that it, it looked okay, each other all day. and you it know, had some voiceover commentary and, and stuff. But important uh, video games. Getting to go out there and beat people up for a living and not get thrown in jail—that has to be one of the best. My most favorite uh, thing about being a wrestler, for sure. Quite the inspiration. Oh boy, w yes, me Gene. I love you, me Gene. You know, I love the game. I play it with my mother-in-law. No, I don't cheat. Please don't ever accuse me of that. I understand right now, back in the locker room area here at the Ice Palace in Tampa, Florida, we have I a couple of this. members of the NWO, Vincent and the Giant. And what are we catching him? Oh, in my. The okay, this is gold. Lead. Yes. You just like real life. I'm killing you. Oh. Who would have thought so that, that still to this day, WCW Big Show would be Nitro involved in wrestling and Virgil uh, would be is doing Virgil in stuff? In terms of the speed of the gameplay, it's it's a lot faster than, than Nitro's engine was. Oh yeah, and, and that is in uh, no way a good thing. There's more moves per character, there's more characters, They're all, they've all been updated. Pick me, or I'll stick your head That was my favorite thing about this game on the PS1. You would hit triangle, and then you would see these uh, dialogues. <sighs> I always remember that. There's the ability to take a weapon and bring it into the ring and use it against your opponent, as you know fans see on. Nothing about this looks good. Nitro. I own this game. Awesome game. I mean. Please don't ask me to play it. Just phenomenal for its time, but. Why are you zooming into him like it's some deep dark interview? Oh my goodness, elbow and, drop. And, uh, you know, it was fun making that. You can throw him into the side of the cage and knock That him looks out. nothing like Rey Mysterio. Climb up the cage I'm just saying. Off and do elbow drops and all those fun moves. That guy, that guy just, just yells 90s. Stop zooming in on him. We're just going to get up to his nostril. Jeebus. Okay, head. who is the cameraman for this? Um, Basically, every move is done frame by frame by hand following a video image. If you motion capture a character, he looks stiff. It might look good on TV, but it yeah. doesn't look good in the game. When I'm you're pretty a sure game, you your animations look more, more stiff than motion capture. We had this back breaking move, so we took an apple and kind of crunched on an apple for a oh, while. Oh, that looks so buttery smooth. Running, so we left it in the game. How can they take something? That hair. I think I need to blur that out for this video. I'm pretty sure that hairstyle was illegal in 2019. Everything about this, the striped shirt, 
Hulk Hogan. The See, this, this is why I love the jam packs, people. Get in there with a, with a Metal Jesus talks about hidden say, gems in video uh, games. I think Saturn everything in team within jam packs, everything really is a hidden gem. We also include a but yeah, I was going to say, how can they take such a smooth manual, engine so like WCW NWO Revenge? I know not the same people worked on this, that, uh, on this, but still, it's like, do the you had it, you had it. Um, it's all laid out for them on paper. And I love the fact that you have Go a CRT TV have fun, onto a steel chair, like on top of it, the, just the, uh, so good. Tips. Mean Gene back here for PlayStation Underground. I understand that there may be a major upset in the making between the Giant and Vincent. Let's check it out. I hope this keeps going for like an hour. Is that memeable? Does somebody do something? <laughs> it's like this evil laugh. Oh no! 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 The nostalgia! The retroness! Thunder really brings the whole experience of, you know, being. Seriously, this can keep going for hours, and I would not have a problem. Or Thursday Thunder event into your living room. That being said, this is pretty substantial. I forget how long the other interview was, but the attention to detail the fact that they're doing all these things with the superstars like regardless of whether you like wrestling or not giant i mean you broke it you break it you buy it you're probably loaded with money though 1998 so this says summer 99 yet the game came out in 98 i gotta check out my timelines but i mean hey that's that's when this came out. So that's been it for WCW Thunder. I feel like we could conclude this video, but we are not done, my friends. Taking a look now at the download station. Some of these did have glitches that would actually cause your memory card to be erased, which no good. And that's no good. I love these unnecessary 3D transitions. Okay, so description and download is separate. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That's that's because the, the games are on the balloon. So we have things for Guilty Gear. Team Team Lossi or Team Lost? Team Lossi RC Racer. Test Drive Off-Road 2. Dark Stalkers, uh, Dark Stalkers 3. That's a fighting game. Guilty Gear, another fighting game. Interesting. So there's a theme to this month. You have two fighting games and two racing games. That is incredibly specific. So for Dark Stalkers, all characters and modes unlocked. So those are the little things that help with this and Think about the fact that for five bucks uh, at this time, you you got yourself a bunch of demos, but then you you actually got some access to uh, certain features of a game. So maybe you didn't want to uh, spend a bunch of time playing something. That was absolutely one of the different ways that you could go about this. And as always, like let me know if there's a particular year that you would like me to, to highlight. I love checking out retro stuff. It's so fun for me. Like this just always takes me back. I'm never gonna get get tired of this, but. This one I'm really curious about, so I may be a little bit more quiet on this one because I, I, I do want to find out about the Pocket Station or Alpha. Hi, my name is Robert Johnson. I am the Associate Marketing Manager here at Capcom Entertainment, and I am here to show you today the Pocket Alpha 3 game for the new Sony Pocket Station. I'm going to show you how the Japanese version works of the Pocket Alpha 3 game. That's like the VMU for Basically, the Dreamcast. Basically what the PDA does is it is a little mini memory card peripheral that plugs right into your PlayStation and allows you to download the characters from your original Alpha 3 game onto the Pocket Alpha 3 game okay. in order to build up the characters while you're on the road. And then once you have them built up, you can easily upload them back to the PlayStation in order to play those edited characters. Another cool feature about so, Pocket so Alpha 3 is that you can stronger? fight against your friends. Just take it around point it at your friends and use the infrared communication device at the top here to play against your friends anywhere. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't believe that ever came out over here. I honestly don't know how many games supported that. So if you actually know something about that or if you have a YouTube channel that has a little bit more information, uh, let me know because I think those little things are, are interesting to look at because in the grand scheme of 90s and, and nostalgia celebration, that's not really talked about. So. Let's take a look at this import now. I've never heard of this game. Some of you have asked for more details of each import and we're happy to oblige. So 
that's really important because, as I mentioned, sometimes the imports are just straight up in Japanese. So if you don't speak the language, you're not going to really be able to navigate the menu. So it does seem like they provided some more context. Gangway Monsters is about a sport called Manchester, where you grow your own creatures and tune the spinning tops they ride, called Bagomas. Hit the other team's Bagomas. I, I like saying that, Bagomas. Hit the other team's Bagomas effectively and your gauge builds. When it's full, use the special attack button to see what each monster can do. In the complete game, you collect money to upgrade your Bagomas. So it's like, like a modified Pokemon? Maybe? So it's like a spin top game based on what I what we just read. This didn't come out in the US as far as I know, which could spell trouble for this game. Hey, Batman! People, that logo. I know bats are not unique to Batman, but come on now. Come on now, really? You, you gotta have a Batman lo a bat logo like that? Young Master, okay, right off the bat, this is giving me some real a Pokemon vibe slash Mega Man Battle Network vibes, because it's got the same font. The Manchester League. That's right, I'm making my debut at the Manchester League today. So I guess they, they translated just enough so you could get by the initial menus, which, I mean, you gotta applaud them for that, right? That's actually pretty nice. As you keep looking at this, I do have a Winter 2000 Jam Pack, if you'd like me to cover that down the line. Uh, I have another one for when the hell is this winter 99 so the year prior I have a couple of these I have a jam pack from fall 2001 so yeah let me know if there's anything you'd like me to uh, cover uh, at some point because it's gonna be that that time capsule of that specific year or, or time of year so we get to name our Pokemon type thing and I'm gonna name them this that. Oh, I get I get two monsters. That's that's more than one. Okay. I get three. Best game ever, people. Best game ever. Okay. Four. I'll be real, the the models actually don't look bad. Uh, I can only select this stage, so let's let's go here. Yeah, this is my first time, okay. Monsters can be recharged with their fighting energy by hitting their bigomas with others. Okay, hey, 3D models. What? What? I don't know what's happening, people. Child. I have a level one child. I, what? Okay, what's happening? This music is really annoying. Okay, so we're not far off right now from what I was thinking. So they're on top of the spinning things. I'm using the analog sticks to move, and I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm the blue one. I'm the blue one. Remember that. This is like Beyblade, right? This is totally Beyblade. Okay, okay. He's upset. He's upset, and I have no idea what to do. I'm just pressing things and nothing. I, I can move around, and it's kind of tank controlly. so pressing left makes me move my character left and then vice versa for the right side. If I like hit him against a wall, does that do a lot of damage? Okay, we're just dancing now. Stop moving! Stop moving! Dude! Okay. I, I don't know why I'm like super bright. Okay, that's no longer happening. Ain't gonna lie, this is one of the most annoying battle soundtracks ever. How long is this soundtrack? One, two, three. I think it's like a four to five second loop, people. Life bar is depleted for one of them. And I'll be real, I can totally see why maybe it didn't make its way to the US. Although, I know we got some Beyblade games on the US, which I barely saw the series, but I, I know of it. So maybe they eventually just swapped out a couple of things and then made it a Beyblade game. But okay, I can't tolerate this anymore. Um, we're good. We're good with that import game. I'm, I'm very happy I didn't spend money on that game growing up, but that's been a look at the PlayStation Underground Jam Pack for summer 1999. Let me know what you thought about it. I love to uh, re-experience these games because I used to play Bloody Roar. I played to extreme and the fact that I see now that they have like these really crappy polygonal models as opposed to just the flat out uh, 2D models uh, is, is uh, an improvement in a way. But, but also not really. But if you enjoyed the video, do not forget folks to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and hit that notifications bell because sometimes I do stream on this channel and that way 
you can be notified of not just when I publish a new video like this one, you can also be notified of whenever I go live right here. But as I keep mentioning, this channel is about you, it's about me, it's about celebrating nostalgia. At the same time, every now and then, I do uh, record some videos about modern games, but my passion, everything that I love about video games really does lie on the 90s and the early 2000s. So up until next time, thank you for watching and take care, everybody.